highly adaptable and omnivorous, baboons face less competition over resources. Baboons eat anything, and they are capable of living in deserts and tropical forests alike. And this is key to their overall adaptability. Baboons in South Africa's Cape Point Nature Reserve have pushed the adaptation envelope even further. Tourist Nick Chevalier caught their unusual eating habits on camera. They're incredibly intelligent baboons. You know, I was watching them in the Cape Point area, near where the tourist buses are. They scan the horizon, they've got good eyesight, and they watch. They're constantly changing direction, looking that way, looking that way, seeing who's moving, what they're doing. They'll be looking off into the distance, and someone only has to rustle a plastic bag, and they immediately turn around and think food. They almost seem streetwise. There's a wide variety of human foods that they're quite happy to eat. Just like humans, they are hardwired to crave that food, so once they're onto it, it's very difficult to ever get them off. When you have a superabundance of high quality food, what the baboon needs to do in the absence of pockets or handbags is to store it. So what they do is they stuff it in their cheek pouches and these cheek pouches become really huge and that's where they'll store the food for subsequent eating. I'll never forget this one baboon with an ice cream eating the ice cream, not showing any signs of cold, being quite comfortable eating the ice cream. When you live in close proximity to humans and you're highly adaptable and omnivorous, then the door is open for accessing our food. Discarded waste offers another tasty target for these wily baboons. This one juvenile is sliding into the swing bin, going and getting its food. He's the only one who can get through there because he's small enough. Just a quick look to see that all was OK, and then go back and get some munchies down in the bin. Safe inside from the adults from competition, but slightly concerned because separated from the rest of the group. But leftovers aren't the only way to get food. Most people go to Cape Point uh, to see the landmark and to see the place where the two oceans meet. And one of the other reasons, of course, is to see the baboons. But what they don't perhaps realize is the potential danger. These animals are very powerful individuals, much more powerful on a weight-to-weight -weight basis than humans are. And you add to that hand power, foot power, four hands effectively, and formidable teeth, and a very powerful bite. With canines longer and sharper than a lion, these baboons respond as they would in the wild. When two baboons within a troop are competing for a resource, they'll rush at each other and often show their teeth as a threat display, and they're using exactly that same behavior on humans. And of course, as the human steps back, that reinforces to go forward. And so it escalates until the person drops their food item, and that's the scene set for baboons dominating humans and getting their food. The baboons appear to follow certain key strategies. Sometimes they're very sly. They'll keep low profile and they'll move from behind. They also do quite a lot of their strikes because people are opening up their boots. They're using the vehicles as a vantage point. Baboons essentially take a car as a mimic for a rock. So what they would be doing is sitting on a rock and surveying their immediate environment for an opportunity and watching other cars, because that's where people are going to be exiting with their bags of food. They can be very vocal and threatening and show their teeth, and that'll be enough to get somebody dropping food for them. They also have the ability, if that's not working, of actually physically grabbing onto somebody to grab food. Mm -hmm. 
the worst incident between a human and a baboon was a lady had her shoes up on top of her car and the baboon had come onto the roof of the car and she made an attempt to get her shoe back. It was unusual for somebody to be injured by the baboon. It just shows the unpredictability of animals. Tourists that ignore requests not to feed the baboons fuel the attacks. So what would be optimal is to get people eating where baboons can't see them eating. And if you keep that separation, then we'll have less conflict. And then we can have a more harmonious way where people benefit from seeing a wild primate in a wonderful setting.